Welcome to our third video for beginning grant writers. Today, we're going to be talking about creating the budget for your proposal and planning for the sustainability of your project. These videos are brought to you by the Ohio State University Office of Extension. My name is Kyle White, and I'm a community development educator in Medina County. I want to introduce you to my colleague, Melissa. Hi, Melissa. Hi, Kyle. It's always great to be with you as we discuss grants and helping others uh, learn more about them. I am Assistant Professor of Family Consumer Sciences right here at Ohio State University Extension, and my office is located in Fulton County. To learn more about our tips and courses around the state, you can go to the Community Development website located here, or for resources in Family and Consumer Sciences, you can visit the website below their title there. Materials used today in our presentation are generously provided by our friends at Purdue University. Our objectives today include understanding what is needed to fully fund what is necessary for your project, whatever it may be, how to create your project, and subsequently, how you plan for sustainability of the project long-term. Working on the budget is perhaps the most exact, precise, predictable part of writing your grant proposal. It's fairly self-explanatory. You have a project goal and there are costs involved. The budget shows your plan to allocate and utilize funds to support your program or project. Some grant makers require a very detailed budget, while others ask for something more general. Depending on the grant, a funder may require two budgets, an operating budget of the organization seeking the grant, and a program-specific budget, specific for your proposal. The operating budget includes all the revenues and expenses of your organization, typically for the current or upcoming year. A program budget shows the anticipated revenue and expenses for the program you are seeking to fund. Some grant makers have their own budget forms that they will require you to complete for your budget proposal. Some may require a budget narrative in which you describe your budget. Other budget proposals allow you to use a spreadsheet or table to illustrate your budget. Whatever the format, your job is to construct a budget that includes all expenses and that will provide adequate funding to cover what you propose to accomplish. Make no mistake, most reviewers will catch major miscalculations in expenses and, and revenues. Underestimating costs may make the proposal seem unrealistic. You may run into difficulties in implementing a proposal if you receive what you ask for, but it's not enough to complete the task. Just as bad as padding the budget. If your budget or, or certain line items seem inflated, a grant maker may question the efficiency of your proposal, such as your proposal calls for installing a solar water heater, but you add into your proposal the need for technical or audiovisual equipment because you want to do some type of audiovisual training in a hybrid format. That could be a stretch. Your funder may not agree that that's necessary for this project. Another budget type would show the entire costs and revenues for the project. Working on the budget is perhaps the most exact, precise, and predictable part of the grant production pr process. The budget shows your plan to allocate and utilize funds to support your program or project. Some grant makers require a very detailed budget while others ask for something more general. Depending on the grant, a funder may require two budgets, an operating budget of the organization seeking the grant and a program budget specific to your proposal. The operating budget includes all the revenues and expenses of your organization, typically for the current or upcoming year. 
A program budget shows the anticipated revenue and expenses for the program you are seeking to fund. Some grant makers have their own budget forms that they require you to complete. Some require a budget narrative in which you describe your budget. Others allow you to use a spreadsheet or table to illustrate your budget. Whatever the format, your job is to construct a budget that includes all the expenses that will provide adequate funding to cover what you propose to accomplish. Make no mistake, most reviewers will catch major miscalculations in expenses and revenues. Underestimating costs may make the proposal seem unrealistic. You may run into difficulties in implementing a proposal if you receive what you ask for, but it's not enough to complete the task. That's just as bad as padding your budget with big figures. If your budget or certain line items seem inflated, a grant maker may question the efficiency of your proposal in general, such as if your project calls for installing a water, a solar water heater, and your project goal is to um, present how efficient the water heater is in low sun exposure. If you also include in your proposal the need for teleconferencing equipment to support hybrid learning, the, the funder may find that not consistent with what the goals of the project are. It may be too bit of, big of a stretch. It's a want rather than a need. Reviewers will be looking for wants. Walking through this simple budget, it has the different categories and associated costs in a literacy project. These are the anticipated costs. Sometime when you're creating a budget, you may miss a cost. You just didn't think of it or anticipate it. You might want to add a miscellaneous line just to cover any of those unanticipated char charges. Looking at this list, can you think of anything that is missing? Without more information, it's hard to tell. But when you're writing your own budget, work with others to create it. They may know something you don't. And it's always helpful to brainstorm with others. A budget can show costs and revenues for, in this case, a food bank project. Another way to show this would be similar to a typical organizational budget with revenues first and then expenses. In this example, the request includes revenue sources that will fund the proposal, including the United Way and Helping Hands in-kind donations, which we will discuss in more detail later, and fees that could have been charged but were waived. Here you see the cost spelled out and the anticipated revenue source. You will see there are other grants listed, in-kind no donations, meaning there is no cost charged, but if there was one, this is what would have been paid. Waived fees, partners like Helping Hands. In this budget, you see the costs and planned sources to fund each line. Read the request for proposal from the funder carefully and familiarize yourself with what they need and want in your proposal. The proposal may very well spell out what the funder wants to see as far as costs go. They want to see that you're, you have thought out your request and that all the expenses and costs are planned for in that budget. The ultimate goal of the budget is to establish a framework of your funding request and to demonstrate that you have a plan that will allow the project to be completed and sustained long term. So here if we were in class, we would pause for a group activity. But just to kind of get you started, we're going to be asking you to consider a proposal and a budget for a splash pad, which if you're not familiar with those, is something like this. It's a child's outdoor water park activity. It is not a pool. There are various parts to different splash pads that could be proposed. And we're gonna ask you to take a minute to consider the costs and the income, the revenue 
and the expenses that you can imagine for a splash pad in your community. Brainstorm your own ideas. What's needed to add a splash pad? What does each item cost? What will it cost to sustain this splash pad in your community for the long term? So if you want to, take a moment, begin to think that through. And when we come back, we'll be joined by Melissa, who will walk you through this whole example. If you took time to shut off your cameras and work on your activity, welcome back. And if you're staying with us, we'll continue on. So here's a picture to en envision our splash pad. And as you started thinking about the components to making this become a reality in your grant proposal, you started thinking about all of the things that would make um, the proposal complete when it comes to funding. From the hardware that we see in this picture, to the water, the utilities, the, um, the staffing power to build it and to maintain it are all some of the things that we would consider. As we look at this example, it's easier to take and jot down your concepts in expenses and income. And in doing so, you can start flushing out each of the um, expenses and income as it matches up to your overall proposal in your grant. If it's in the grant, it should be in your budget. And if it's in the budget, it should be in your grant. So brainstorm those ideas and Better yet, grab a friend and have them show you maybe your blind spots or a different perspective that they might have caught. So expenses could be um, building the components of the splash pad, those unique and um, beautiful elements that spray water all over um, uh, people on a very hot day. It could be the concrete. It could have been the designer and the person who designed the land forming to make it work, the person that brought in the utilities. It could be the person that um, washed down everything before the first opening day and then maintaining it with sanitation, renewing the water source. Then you think about income. How could a splash pad bring income? Well, if it's a community park, maybe it's fenced and you have a, a small entry fee of a dollar a person. Perhaps it's added to um, the, the city council budget. Perhaps it is a rental that you can rent it out for parties and you're bringing in some extra income. These are ways to be creative, but realistic within your grant proposal. So taking a look at your budget from this exercise, how is it helpful to have an exercise like this? You take a picture, you, you think about it, you grab a friend, get their perspective. I'm sure I mentioned a few things that maybe you didn't think about and you thought of a few things that I didn't mention and bring, bring those ideas together in a brainstorming kind of uh, activity. If you brainstormed new potential revenue streams or unanticipated costs that those appear, what jumped out to you? Like, I never thought about sanitizing the equipment. Also, how can you use this information when you start writing your grant? This information should, as I said before, match up with what's said in your grant. And if it comes to mind as you're writing that budget, you can also go back into the proposal and in your narrative, define that closer or make it um, connect in a stronger way that the reviewer can take a look at your proposal and see exactly how it makes sense in your budget. In some proposals or in some uh, requests for funding, you might see something called a match. You especially see this in federally funded programs and government programs. So what is a match? A match is sometimes uh, required from funders that matches a donation or a certain dollar amount. That match um, wants other people to invest in the project. This can look like in-kind contributions, such as volunteer hours, donated items. Sometimes it can include, uh, be included in that match. And maybe it's even equipment or materials. One of the things that match does, especially for those funders not in your current area, it can show that greater local buy-in, that commitment from your community and your partners so that this is an important task for them. So as I mentioned, a match can be monetary, it's dollars contributed to the program from other 
um, donors and grants. It could be materials. It could be staff time of the people that are um, involved, maybe the parks and recreation staff in the, in the case of our splash pad. And it can also be volunteer time. Maybe you have um, a parent uh, uh, volunteer group uh, in your neighborhood that will maintain and wash down that equipment once a week and making sure that it's being maintained and sanitary. Matching and kind are not always the same thing. Um, when you're talking in kind, this is where you demonstrate that contribution of cost savings by something that's donated to the project that doesn't necessarily mean finances. So match sometimes is only money and sometimes it could be in kind. When it's in kind, this is the opportunities for the community to come together. In the case of our splash pad, maybe the local um, contractor says, I'll donate um, labor and materials for the concrete. And perhaps uh, staff time of the local uh, Parks and Rec, they'll donate 25% um, of their uh, pool staff to come over and supervise certain times of the week um, when the splash pad is open. You can have volunteer time, and also space and rental. If someone um, would uh, contribute space for planning meetings and or uh, provide you uh, a place to have your meetings to discuss the, the development of your uh, project. Um, in other types of projects, this might be where you hold your educational opportunities in the local library and that time that space and time has value and can be written as an in-kind contribution in your grant. So once you've written your grant and you are looking towards the future, the question often becomes, how do you keep it going? Well, that's called sustainability. That is taking the grant past the initial um, funder and keeping that project going into the future. A funder wants to know that you have a plan besides calling them up next year and saying, may I have some more money to keep that plan going within the community, within the project. So as we think about our splash pad, how could we sustain it? So the sustainability plan could be that you are looking for donations within the community. Your plan might um, be soliciting funds from local um, parent groups or uh, youth groups. Perhaps they'll do a fundraiser to keep the splash pad going. It could also be that you have an income of some sort of fee. Maybe it's renting it out for a birthday party or a cost per participant in your splash pad. Each of these things is a sustainability um, metric that can be put into your grant to show that you have a plan moving past the initial project development. And this can be a big win when a reviewer is looking at taking this to the next level. So as we consider some of the budget tips, we've talked a little bit about developing it, thinking through the plan, having it connect to the narrative. Let's look at these tips. First and foremost, if you have a grant proposal in front of you and you're looking at that uh, the funders requirements, whether that's called um, an SGA or a NOFA, or there's lots of different words for it, but go to the budget section of that document and follow the grant guidelines. If you can do nothing else that um, makes as much sense to you, read and follow. Um, funders are watching that and they appreciate that direct connection. Don't include any ineligible expenditures. I think Kyle mentioned this very, um, very wisely earlier that if you're asking for funding for uh, solar panels, you're not going to rewire your entire office for um, technology for teleconferencing. They're different um, initiatives, different um, target goals. So if we're going to stick to with one project and make it um, work for that project, we're going to try and avoid those things that don't relate. And if a grant um, grantor has said we specifically will not fund whatever X, Y, or Z, we're not going to include X, Y, or Z. If they don't fund personnel time, if they do not fund capital improvements, if they do not fund insurances or of something of that nature, then we're not going to write them into the grant. The budget should always line up with the narrative. 
in a way, the budget is your narrative in numbers. So if you think about it, if it shows up one place, it should show up in the other. It might look slightly different, but they should connect and you should never wonder why something is represented in one place or the other without the, the matching component. Also, it's always good to research the, and find those best deals. As we look at um, project uh, proposals, we wanna make sure that we do that rule of three. Get three estimates and then put that quote in there. We're not always looking for the largest or the smallest. We're looking for the best quality and most feasible for our project. And in cases where you have a larger item of value, we wanna take time to um, attach those quotes in your proposal if they give you a space to do so. In addition, those budget tips, we're gonna look at uh, the qualitative differences. What if the better product that makes most sense for your, your sustainability and your community's use for that, that splash pad has that higher value, but it also includes servicing the equipment for the next five years, which has a, a more of a quality of impact and, and might have a little higher cost, but comes out um, in that effort. You want to make sure you consider all those extra fees and costs and make sure that they're represented in your budget. And of course, we're going to check our math. When, when you're looking at your budget, just as you go through and spell check, we're going to go through and check the math. Does it add up? And does it add up at the final amount? And of course, have someone else take time to review that budget with you. So let's summarize. Kyle, we've gone over a lot in this budget so far. There should be a really the, the financial um, component of the budget is your financial story. So if you told your story in the narrative, which we've talked about in other editions of, um, of this telecast, we are looking at the budget and it does tell the story. It demonstrates community buy-in and it's a realistic approach to the project. And it's better to be under committed in perfection and over committed in your performance. So it is better to take the budget and and overperform and undercommit because when you do that you're a higher chance of making that budget work for you without padding it and without underfunding it and having more success that's absolutely right melissa and we want to thank you all for joining us today we hope this is helpful and that you're able to use this information in creating your budget for your next fun proposal as you advent, take your adventure to the next level with your grant writing. Um, we, If you have any questions, you can contact us. Our contact information is here. We're available and we'd love to help you write a successful grant proposal. Thanks and have a great day. <music>